Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Um, so we're going to carry on from where we left off last time, um, except this time we're actually going to add some animations to our player so that he's not just sliding around the scene. Um, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to do it for the not target mode first, and then we'll do it for the target mode. So for now, we're just going to have running, idle, and sprinting. Um, and then in our target mode, we'll add the strafing, walking backwards, the stat, and the other. Okay, so to start off with, I have a inside my models, inside my jack, I've added a few animations. Um, I will put a link in the description to where I got these animations, um, but they're very simple. As you see, I've got like a walking here. And I've also got all the ones we need. So I've got um, strafing, running, this, that, and the other. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to create under, um, in my project, I'm just going to create a animator controller. And I'm just going to call this Jack for now. Okay, so on my character now, under anim animator, I'm just going to add in our jack that we just created. All right, so opening up jack, we're going to go ahead and add in a few animations here. So I'm going to create a blend tree to start with. So I'm just going to create um, a new blend tree. When I'm going to do this, I'm just going to call this um, move mint. There we go. And then inside movement, what we're going to do is we'll add a, a motion. Uh, we're going to go to parameters on the left and instead of blend, we are going to call this uh, vertical. There we go. So inside our blend tree, uh, we're going to add three motions, uh, four motions actually. Um, and then the animations we're going to apply to our guy is we want the idle. So to add the idle, you just click and drag it into one of the motions we created. We want walking. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. We want some running. And we also want our sprint. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to minimize our animations folder and everything for now. And what we're going to do now is we're going to work off of here. So if we take a look at how this blend tree actually works. So basically we had a value in this case vertical and depending on this vertical, it'll blend these animations together here. So if I hit play, you can have a look at the preview here. Let's see as our vertical increases, goes through each of these different animations and blends them together nicely which is good. Um, obviously we've used a character controller, so we're not gonna be using re root motion. So you're probably wondering how we sync this up with our character movement speed. Um, and the good news is you've already done 60%, 70% of the work. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is instead of automating the thresholds, we're gonna compute the thresholds. Um, so this is depending on the actual animation you use. Uh, we're gonna use, basically use the velocity and we're gonna apply and we get, we're basically going to um, make those our movement speeds. Um, so I know we use the uh, velocity Z um, in our animations here. So you see, now that I've told it to calculate, um, compute the thresholds off of velocity Z, you see our idle goes a little bit funny. Idle should always be zero. Um, but you can kind of see our uh, walking forward velocity is 1.5. The running is 3.65 and the sprinting is 4.66. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to actually go into our player controller script here and we're going to create a reference to our animator that we just added. So underneath character controller, I'm just going to add animator and I'm just going to call this character animator. I'm going to set the value in the awake underneath our character controller. So get component animator okay 
So now we need to set the variable we created inside the animator. In this case, our vertical. So I'm going to go down to, um, here we go, our movement. And the values we're going to give it is our horizontal speed and vertical speed. Uh, the value will be different based off of whether we're in target mode or not. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add another if statement down here. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say if is target mode. And right now we're just going to work on the else. Um, we'll come back to the is target mode. Um, and what we need to do now is give it um, our current speed. Um, as we know, if we're not in target mode, our vertical and horizontal speed um, is based off of similar values. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to see which one of these is greater than one. Uh, so it's going to get a little bit complicated here. Um, but I'll try to go through it slowly so you guys can kind of see what, we, what I mean. So I'm going to create a variable uh, that's a float for animator forward uh, vertical. I'm just going to set that to zero for now. And what we're basically going to do is we'll say... So we need to do a calculation to firstly check um, whether any of these two are negative and then also pick which is the greater. So what I'm going to do now is basically say I'm going to create two variables for vertical actual speed and horizontal actual speed. Okay, and we'll set these valuables, valuables, variables here. We can say vertical speed, um, if that's less than zero, we're going to basically uh, do vertical speed times minus one, else just vertical speed. So basically this will just uh, stop it from being negative. And horizontal speed will do the exact same thing. So if horizontal speed is less than zero, we'll do horizontal speed times minus one. Um, that was just horizontal speed. Okay, and our animator vertical will basically equal whichever one of these is greater. So I'm going to move this a little bit lower down. Here. And instead of setting it to zero, we're going to do a little inline statement here as well. So if vertical actual speed is greater than horizontal actual speed, then we want vertical actual speed else else we want horizontal actual speed. Okay, now to use this animated vertical that we've just created. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to what we call this character animator. Go back down. And what we're going to do is we're going to do character animator dot set float. And then you do the name of the float, which I believe we just called vertical, which we did. So the name of the float followed by the value you want to give it, in which case we're going to give it animator vertical. All right, so let's go ahead and firstly set our new walking, running and sprinting speeds. Um, so we can see walking forward, I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to type that in every time. And I'm going to paste that in here. And we're going to do the same for the others as well. So we got our running speed. And also our sprinting speed. I'm going to copy that. Okay. Okay, so walking speed running speed, sprinting speed is all set. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this a lot bigger. So I'm going to go uh, 20, uh, a little bit bigger than 20. We'll go 100 by 100. There we go. A lot of room to play with. 
I'm also going to go into our grid material. I'm going to add this tiling to 100 by 100. Alright, so now I'm going to maximize and I'm going to go into the game. We'll just check how this looks. So, aside from the camera struggling to keep up, the animations do seem to be alright. Okay, so we're going to actually add a little bit of an offset just so that we're able to um, change the movement speed. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to add another header. Oh, actually, we won't add it there. We'll add it up here. And the header, I'm just going to call movement. And underneath the header, I'm also going to add a public float for movement speed offset. And by default, I'm just going to set that to one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this movement speed offset, but a bit further down where we set our target vertical speed and times it by the input.y. Um, it's these values here we want to edit. So I'm going to add it in its own brackets and then times that value by the movement speed offset. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the target horizontal speed. Times by the movement speed offset. So I'm going to go ahead and take what that look <laughs> take take a look at what that looks like. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to I'm going to hit play here, uh, and I'm just going to make sure that the I'm going to take a look at the threshold values for when we're moving forward and right. So it looks like 1.088. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm also going to come into the animator on the blend tree. I'm going to add another motion field. I'm actually going to give it a value of 1.088. I'm going to give it the walking forward animation. So now if we take a look and move forward and right, um, let's just make sure our uh, movement speed offset is set to 1. We'll just make sure that when I move forward and right, the walking animation still plays properly. Yep, I really need to sort out this camera smoothing. <laughs> There's only when I'm recording, it goes a bit funny. Okay, so... Obviously the speed, the speed will be a little bit different, so you can adjust the speed just using this. So I'm going to set it to 0.95 for now. Um, we'll have a play with it and align it up properly later. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do now is the movement smooth stamp. I'm going to set that to a lower value, say 0.2. We'll just see what this looks like. Okay, you see it, it gets to the values a lot quicker and blends a lot quicker. Uh, so I'm going to set that to 0 0.3 for now. Uh, movement speed offset, basically we can adjust this to um, uh, basically slow down the speed but still keep the thresholds. So as an example, if I set this to 0 0.8 or we can even go 0 0.4 you'll see our speed will be drastically reduced. We'll only be moving at 40% speed, which we can use for some special effects. So say if um, we get stuck in the mud or something like that. Okay, so um, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, in the next one, we're gonna come back and we'll actually do strafing and moving backwards and forwards uh, for when we're in target mode. So stay tuned for that one and I'll see you in the next one.